Bang, bang, he hit the ground. Bang, bang, his baby shot him down. You know, Russia has had a streak of bad luck recently. A few hard landings, one after another. <laughs> On June 23rd, 2023, Evgeny Prigozhin, the owner of Chevaka Wagner, Russia's biggest and best, best equipped um, private army, started the mutiny against Russian President Vladimir Putin. He announced that Chevaka Wagner, his pocket army, had had enough and was moving out to capture Rostov. What followed was sheer madness. Prigozhin succeeded. He captured Rostov, full of Russian armed force personnel, you know, armor and so forth, uh, military air airstrip, air airport, um, military southern HQ, tons of, you know, tens of thousands of cops, you know, KGB people. He captured in a matter of a uh, couple hours. He um, ca captured Army HQ. He held hostage uh, and humiliated two top generals of the Russian army. He shot down multiple Russian armed forces aircraft, killing 14 pilots, and that's on the territory of Russia. And almost captured Moscow. He made it uh, very close to Moscow and um, with threats to dethrone Putin. Then Putin basically negotiated with Prigozhin and Prigozhin sold out his men, you know, his mission. He basically gave up in return in exchange for money and God knows, God knows what, what else. Well, but Prigozhin humiliated Putin so much that no one has ever done before. That was the mutiny started on the 23rd of June this year. And today is August 23rd, two months exactly to the date. And today Prigozhin was killed. His private plane was shot down. The rumors have it that it was shot down by the Russian armed forces, actual evidence of that uh, Russian Armed Forces air missile system, C-200, and there are, there's evidence start coming out right now um, of that. I'll talk about that later. Two months exactly is very symbolic and has a few meanings. The first is the reminder that revenge is the dish served cold, best served cold, and the second is that Putin openly showed everyone that he means business. Don't ever think of repeating what Prigozhin tried to do. Um, at this point, I only have one question. Why no one is calling Lukashenko? Howdy, howdy, everyone. My name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. What you will not find here is propaganda, vs or lies. What you will find here is truth, common sense, and logic, and some emotions, because I'm a human being. Today, this un, uh, unscheduled emergency stream of a scheduled emergency situation. Prigozhin was killed um, a few hours ago, and I'd like to give you the breaking news right now. And they are happening in Russia as we are speaking as I am speaking right now. So, <sighs> Prigozhin's dead. Where is he? Um, this was the question until literally a few minutes ago. Um, that question was everyone was asking. If he, if he, if he like, was, it, is, is, was he really dead? Or perhaps he somehow miraculously escaped, didn't board the plane or whatever. Um, my bad back then uh, was that Prigozhin was really dead. I've uh, said quite a few times in the streams at different times after uh, January of this year that Prigozhin was a dead man walking. 
And I said it in early January when Prigozhin started openly feuding and insulting Ministry of Defense and the Minister of Defense, Shoigu. Then I said it after he started shooting targets uh, in the form of uh, Shoigu and Gerasimov with the message of I'll kill them, you know. Then I said it after he openly insulted Putin um, in May. Then I said it after he threatened to dethrone Putin and started the mutiny and moved on to Moscow and shot down the aircraft, you know. And I have turned right because just minutes ago, the Russian government confirmed on all major channels that Yevgeny Prigozhin was killed in a plane crash. Happened 6 p.m. today, about six hours ago. Well, um, in case you forgot, or in case you don't know, let me remind you who Prigozhin was. And I'll be brief, um, but he's quite a guy. He was quite a guy. <coughs> First, he was criminal. Um, he was a felon, convicted felon. Um, and he served multiple terms. He first got uh, broke the law and got into prison for theft at age of 18. He was given two-year prison term um, that he didn't serve. I think it's called um, probation. And then right after he was sentenced, he broke another uh, law. He staged a heist, armed heist. And uh, he got... 12 years in prison, he served 10 in maximum security prison, and he got out when uh, the USSR was breaking up and everything was changing. Prigozhin couldn't do anything in a new country, so he was uneducated. He was a hardcore criminal, spent all his life in prison, so he started selling hot dogs. <laughs> That's a good career. Um, then he somehow met in the 90s. He met Vladimir Putin through some kind of business. Uh, and he became a crook. He opened his restaurant. He started cooking for Putin. It was cook, Putin's cook, chef. Not chef, cook. Um, he started opening uh, restaurants. And, um, you know, then in 2011, he created Russia's first private army, Cheveka Wagner. Uh, operated in Africa. And then uh, after the war in Ukraine started last year, he moved his private army into Ukraine, and for 11 months he was trying to capture Bakhmut. Um, he was known as a piece of crap, as the low of the lowest that the human being can fall. He was criminal, he was murder. Uh, he killed people openly in public. Um, you all remember the infamous video of how Chevika Wagner's fighter was duct taped to a hot surface and his head was smashed with a sledgehammer. So, and that's just one of the episode. So, then at the end of his life, he staged a mutiny against Vladimir Putin. Like I said earlier, he took, um, captured the city of Rostov. Huge city. City of Rostov. He um, um got into a fighting with the Russian armed forces. He shot down multiple aircraft. Oh, well, you know, you remember what he did. He actually semi succeeded in his mutiny. He made it almost on the two outskirts of Moscow. He was about less than 200 away from the Kremlin. And Vladimir Putin started negotiating with him and uh, promised him something. Then uh, Wagner turned turned around. Prigozhin turned around and moved his troops into Belarus. Um, Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, gave his word that he would keep Prigozhin safe. Ha, ha, ha. Never trust Lukashenko. <laughs> Prigozhin learned that in the hard way, you know. So, uh, and this is what I said in my stream on June 27. Let me quote myself. Prigozhin must die. One of the aftermaths of 
the mutiny will be Prigozhin's death. Prigozhin must die. Evgeny Prigozhin committed a mortal sin, not a crime, but a mortal sin. He publicly turned against his creator, Vladimir Putin, and attempted to seize the most important that Putin has. His power is precious. Prigozhin was a hot dog seller, and that was Vladimir Putin who gave him everything. Power, money, permission to create world's famous troll factories, then private army Chevika Wagner. Vladimir Putin gave him power over people's life. He put him above the law. Prigozhin owed Putin everything. And what did Prigozhin do? He stole from Putin? He insulted Putin? He disobeyed orders? No. That's all forgivable. He did the unthinkable. He backstabbed. He attempted to steal the power. No one else in the history of the world did that to Vladimir Putin. Moreover, by his successful attempt, Prigozhin showed the entire world how small, scared, and weak Putin is. And that's double mortal sin. That will not be forgotten, and that will not be forgiven. Prigozhin must be punished. The entire world must see how Putin deals with those who try to take away his power. The entire world will soon be in awe. Prigozhin is toast. He is a dead man walking. This is exactly word to word. I actually read what I just said. I quoted myself. That was my stream, June 27th. Well, I turned out to be right. Um, Prigozhin is dead. And it has taken less than two months for my words to come through. Why did I predict that? Because plain and simple, if you apply logic and common sense, it becomes, it becomes very clear. It became very clear what was to come. Um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand <laughs> If you understand how Putin thinks, if you understand his mindset, and I believe that I do, even just a little bit, you know, that's enough to understand his actions and what is to come. So um, that's it. So what happened? What happened? Let me tell you. Plain and simple. 6 p.m., 6.20 to be exact, a plane, one of the Prigozhin's planes, and he has a few, uh, we know of two, but most likely he has few more planes. Um, I think that the model is Embraer 600. So one of his planes was flying from Moscow to St. Petersburg, where he lives. His home is in St. Petersburg, was in St. Petersburg. And uh, it was shot down. The plane was shot down. Um, at this point, these are rumors, but the locals who actually saw that happening, they heard the sound of missiles flying and shooting the plane. Uh, and they heard the big boom in the sky and some filmed. It's on the video. And now, just before I started the stream seconds, a new evidence starts coming in. Um, the pieces of plane... They have, like, bullet holes in them. Uh, parts, of, most likely the parts, particles of the missiles that hit the plane. So it was shot down by air to defense, air defense missile. Shoigu, Gerasimov, где патроны? Where are the missiles? Well, Shoigu sent Prigozhin some missiles. Final, at last. Uh, wow can't really say that this was not it was expected again by me and by many people it was expected but it happened and it always ground shaking mo uh, moment ground shaking event when it happens you know so it happened today again Russia has had streak lately a streak of uh, hard landings you know now, um, I would like to 
uh, just uh, have a couple of words of the aftermath. What actually, why is this important for Russia, for current situation, and what's going to happen next? Um, well, first of all, I think that Prigozhin had some insurance. He would be absolutely stupid not to. He was very close to Putin. He owned a few restaurants, very expensive ones in St. Petersburg, where Putin and uh, Russia's highest officials dined quite a few times. And rumors have it that the restaurants were filming 24-7 of all customers coming in. So Prigozhin have had compromising evidence on every single person who is who is who in Russia, including Vladimir Putin. And now, I bet, um, we will have different pieces of evidence appearing, you know, uh, as a part of an insurance plan of Prigozhin. Well, it'll be very interesting to watch. My bucket of popcorn right here. Mm, I like uh, sweet popcorn, you know, caramel covered. And um, I definitely... Uh, I'm uh, sitting back and watching, and I will be letting you know if something interesting surfaces. Number two, the lesson taught. Now, every single oligarch is understands that he could be next if he misbehaves, and every oligarch has a plane, and it turned out to be very simple. A plane shot down near Moscow by Russian Armed Forces missile defense system. Bang, bang, he shot me down just like that. You know, in the middle of a day, in front of everyone, bang, bang, you know. Um, so, a lot of people start thinking. And that actually might get, start things moving. Uh, we don't know that, it's just an insinuation, but, you know. Number three. Oh my gosh. This is so symbolic. Guess what Putin is doing right now? He is at a huge concert celebrating. Well, <clears throat> the concert is some anniversary of some war event. But, you know, I was wondering, why did Putin attend it? Why is he there? What, if, what is he celebrating? And then, boom, I learned, just like that. Bang, bang, he hit the ground, you know. <laughs> um, that's, that's pretty symbolic, you know. Then, um, another aftermath is, there are so many versions are already out and start appearing. Well, none of them says anything about, you know, C-200, but people heard. And there's evidence right now, the pictures of um, wings of the plane, you know, with holes from particles. Uh, but that's up to experts to decide, of course. And uh, So the versions about the terrorism are out. The versions about Ukrainians, or oh, everyone's kind of be just... Uh, blaming Ukrainians. Uh, what a freaking coincidence, you know. Uh, <laughs> Prigozhin is dead and Ukrainians, of course, you know, Ukrainians caused this uh, explosion on board or something like that. I think I'm expecting a version of aliens coming down and shooting Prigozhin's plane. We'll, we'll wait and see. And, um, you know, what will happen now? Not much. Not much. Uh, I think that the biggest lesson that everyone has learned is that if they start something, they should go until the very end. Prigozhin didn't, and look what happened to him. The last thing I just heard, uh, the news literally a few minutes ago, as you know, when Prigozhin sold out Chevaka Wagner, he made a deal with Putin, and he turned away from Moscow, turned around. He immediately moved his private army into Belarusian territory, Belarus territory. 
under the word of Lukashenko that they're not going to be prosecuted or you know touched. Um, now, two months ago, right at the day when Prigozhin was killed, Ministry of Defense started moving out ChVK Wagner fighters on its planes. No one knows where, most likely to Russia. They are either going to put them right back into prisons where they came from, or they're going to execute them. Uh, you know, we don't know at this point, but nothing good, nothing good will happen to Chivaka Wagner. And let me quote me uh, myself from uh, in my stream in 27th of June, I also said something about Chivaka Wagner. I already quoted myself on Prigozhin, and um, I'm going to say of Chivaka Wagner. The biggest threat to Putin right now is Chivaka Wagner, I'm quoting. Wagner is a real deal. Wagner is a huge existential threat to Putin's power. Wagner is not controlled by anyone except for Prigozhin, a mighty force with no control, Wagner has already tried to take power and succeeded. Therefore, fighters of Wagner, they have tasted the blood. To let Wagner exist further is like to have a rattlesnake under your pillow. If the snake doesn't like something about you, it'll kill you in the future. Therefore, Wagner must die. It makes sense to anyone. Moreover, to let Wagner to, to uh, be created and operated in Russia was a lunacy. A strong private army equals mutiny and a power grab in the future. And that's exactly what happened. And Wagner will die. They won't kill it. The Russian government won't kill it openly at once. Wagner troops are considered heroes uh, now by many after what they did in Ukraine, you know, captured Bakhmut, and especially after the justice march, you know, that's the mutiny. So many Russians loved this justice march, but they'll use Russian government's most favorite strategy, stepping stones or boiling the frog. The process has already begun. They have already moved around 5,000 troops to Belarus, so they started splitting the Wagner. Now they'll be offering carrots to many, offering to sign contracts with Ministry of Defense in exchange for large cash bonuses. They'll use sticks on those who will remain, uh, who will decide to stick with Wagner. They'll create a law that would pardon criminals and uh, that would put pardoned criminals back to prisons. And they'll come up with many more things. Russian government is very creative. So this is exactly what I said about Chivaka Wagner on June 27th. And this has started happening right now. Whoever at this point has not, has not signed the contract with Ministry of Defense, whoever remains in Belarus, putting everyone on the plane, I'm pretty sure against their will, moving back to Russia, and uh, soon we're going to find out where. Folks, I am ready to, I'm done talking. I'm ready to turn on the comments, and please let me know what you think. Please let me know your theories. Ask me questions, and let's... Follow the news as they unfold live right now. Let's do it for about half an hour, and then uh, we'll see what's up. Thank you. So let me turn this live stream chat on. And I will uh, update you while I've been talking for half an hour, you know. Things already happened, so I got to... Check out the news and let me know, and let you know. Bang, bang, he hit the ground. Bang, bang, his baby shot him down. Literally. While I'm turning the live stream chat on, would you please consider helping me out a little bit, spread my message by making reposts in your social media accounts. That helps, believe it or not, the algorithm loves that. So would you please do that? The chat is on. We have quite a few people today, about 8,600. So.
Hello mods. Um, in case you are here for the first time, we have the best moderation team in the world. Lorna, Mommy K, uh, Bob S, Harry Potter, Prince Amir Fazad. And right now we're seeing just Lorna and Mommy and Bob S. All right, folks, as usual, uh, the fantastic to see the usual suspects. And as usual, if you want me to see your comment or question, please put it in caps and put inside Russia after at sign. So I see it highlighted in large orange box. Thank you, just like Eileen did. Uh, thanks for the message. I'm afraid this will make zombified Russians believe in their so powerful Tsar even more. Mm, how? Uh, will it make Prigozhin a martyr? You see, let's just divide. Message for the ones who know, for the oligarchs, you know, for the people making decisions in the vertical of power, and for the regular Russians. They don't care what regular Russians will think about Prigozhin. They, will, they don't care about, well, he's going to be a martyr for them or not. He's dead. He's gone, you know. He is a memory. Putin probably celebrating right now because Prigozhin and his Wagner are not threats anymore. So, and that is the message to the elites. Look what happens to people who try, even try to, you know, move on and threaten me. Brian Woods, thank you. What does Prigozhin's death mean for the various countries in Africa who have administrations and armies backed by the Kremlin? Ooh, they are in trouble. These, uh, I'd say countries in Africa, I would say that those who were backed by Prigozhin are dictators, no good people. And I think their lives have become just much more difficult. But I'm not an expert in Africa. This is what my thought is. And uh, we'll, I will keep on looking, watching, and listening with my popcorn, I'll be letting you know what's happening. Svein Johansson, thank you so much. Which sane pilot dares to fly over Russia now? Did Putin just close their traffic over Russia? No, this Russian plane was flying inside Russia. I mean, there's tons of foreign planes flying in and out of Russia, and there's tons of Russian planes. But thing is, <laughs> flying in Russia over Russia is fairly safe. Because they're not shooting down passenger planes, you know. They shot down the specific plane. They knew who was on board. James Varela, thank you so much. If Assange walks out of jail after all his time, Putin will think he tanked and will end up dead too. Thank you. It's not a question. It's a statement. Um, I can't say I agree. But, you know, point taken. Thank you. Doxy Mom, thank you for gifting sponsorship to five people. Thank you from me and from five people. And there's a message from Michael Mikhail Silberg. Hard to believe Prigozhin would, wouldn't anticipate this. Possible he's hiding somewhere. <laughs> I've heard this version, uh, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, Prigozhin did fly numerous times from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Um, he flew many times every single day. He flew in and out of Africa, you know. He was always on the move. He never hid from anyone. And, uh, you know, somehow he was absolutely sure that nothing would happen to him. Well, bang, bang, he hit the ground. KG1, what happened to Suravikin? Sacked or the next flight? He is sacked now. He was sacked yesterday. Um, officially fired. I think that the next flight is coming because he was on the inside of that coup. He knew what was going on and some say that he was orchestrating everything. So it's going to be... I, I also think he's a dead man walking, but we'll see about that. 
Eugene Lindsay, howdy, howdy. Frank in Texas, the usual suspects. Um, fantastic to see you on. You all, I am looking for the messages with um, caps, uh, typed in caps and with highlighted in orange inside Russia. Keith from Hawaii, howdy. Sophie Ian, howdy. Dan Caldwell. Uh, Isabel Mass, is this what they call going out with a bang bang? Yes, it is, exactly. Bang bang, he hit the ground. Simon Eddy, good evening. Roy Cousins from London. Uh, Gamby 82, someone was smoking on the plane. Of course, they accidentally opened the window and, you know, fell out. Angela McNaw, howdy, howdy. Greetings from Maryland. Message posted on Facebook. Thank you, Leitmotiv, for me. Thank you, I appreciate it very much. Bang, bang, education for Prigozhin. Luigi, I cannot argue with that. Veronica Misfod. Mifsad. Howdy, howdy. Mix Thailand in the house. Wow. Tick, tick tock, tick tock. The croc has his lunch, has had his lunch. Well, a part of his lunch, should we say. Aisma, um, howdy. I wonder what's going to happen with Prigozhin family now. Lose of most their money, start hiding. I think both. I think they will start hiding and they will lose most of their money for sure. But hey, you know, <laughs> this is a boomerang law. This is the this is the karma law. I mean, what what do you expect happen with Prigozhin family? Kept all the money, given them some more. No, once he's dead, once he's gone, his his fortune is going to be up for the grabs and for the taking. Sean, I would imagine that Wagner could revolt in defense of their leader. Uh, well, there right now. You see, I think, my opinion is, it has all been planned. Because right after the crash, a couple hours later, they have big transport planes of Ministry of Defense, Army planes, and in Belarus. And they are boarding, they're moving all the Wagner troops onto the planes and moving them someplace else. Where? Gulag? Prisons? We'll find out soon. So I don't think they have a chance to revolt in defense of their leader. No. Nose red uh, took way longer. Yeah, I agree with you. Same here. What will Wagner do now? Wagner is no more. Prigozhin is gone, his uh, right-hand commander is gone, Utkin, real Nazi. And um, Wagner fighters, the remaining ones, are being boarded onto Russian Ministry of Defense, Russian Armed Forces planes, to be moved someplace else. Read my lips, Wagner is no more. Arturo Brito, real version of the Godfather, agreed. Darla, didn't Dmitry Utkin die to in that plane? I just said that. Um, real SOB. Had swastika tattooed all over his body, you know. Linda Hockey, right again. Now what? A new PMC coming. Um, there are many private military companies right now, and there's wars. There are local militias being hired, being built by the local governments, of the governments of provinces. A stream coming for that. Rope access work, thank you, from Sweden. My sledgehammer is was naive. Why didn't he think he could come and go as he pleased in Russia? Why did he think? Well, it must have been a part of the deal, but the whole thing was very strange, was very fishy for me. Right from the beginning. Remember, in the streams, I was asking one thing. 
I said, well, I understand everything what happened. The one question that is not answered, one thing I don't understand is, what did they promise Prigozhin so he turned back? And how they guaranteed that he's going to get it? Well, <laughs> now we know. This is how. Micah, thank you for sponsoring uh, five people from me and from five people. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we also have a new sponsor, Tulio Counter. Welcome to Inside Russia. This is the best community online. Andy Blatchford, thank you so much. I will keep it up. Thank you. Robert Harris, it'll be interesting to see how the African countries handle the Wagner operations now. <laughs> Very interesting to see. I have my, my popcorn right here, and I'm going to eat it. Teresa D., you said it a couple months ago inside Russia. Well, I said it exactly on the 27th of June. Go and watch my stream. And um, I quoted myself today. I remember making that stream. I remember. This is exactly what I said. I predicted, and voila. Erbeka 820, howdy, howdy. Frank B., um, two days ago, the U.S. government issued a travel advisory to Belarus. I assume we knew this was about to go down. Didn't want our people getting trapped over there. Or was it coincidence? Frank, I think it was a coincidence. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, mm, I don't think anything is different for the Americans in Belarus right now. I, of course, can be wrong. But from what I understand, nothing has changed. So uh, in the U.S., State Department issues these travel advisories quite often. It issued a few times and. Russia in the last year, nothing really was changed for the Americans there. Brian Struvig, Wagner Kaput, thank you so much, my friend. This message I like to see. Indeed, Wagner is Kaput. Giovanni, howdy, howdy. Sean Wagner with revolt. I think you meant to write Wagner will revolt. Well, <laughs> Wagner is no more, but hey, you know what? What do I know? We will see. Time will tell very soon. I will keep you updated. Latitia Israel. Shalom from Jacksonville, Florida. Shalom, Leolom. I'm shocked. It's suspicious. I'm not shocked, but, um, you know. Truffles. How do you think it will affect Russia on the world stage? Mm, this is a separate stream. I think what happened today is actually going to have uh, an imp impact on the markets, on the Russian ruble. Russian ruble will fall tomorrow uh, on the news, will devalue more. Uh, it might hit the 100 again after all the measures that the Russian central bank did, which is not good news for the economy. And I think that Basically, that does not add to the image of Putin in the world. It actually worsens his situation in the world stage. Sexto, inside Russia, watch to see who Putin gives out a medal to in the next month, because that officer probably pleased press the missile fire button today. I think if he uh, gives a medal or something like that, he's going to do it not in public. Okay, There are like um, not public procedures for that. Some people are given medals and honors in public and some are not. It's called secret order or something like that. Hostile respite. Thank you so much. Any chance this was staged, brother? Putin and Prigozhin were pretty close. Uh, reputation laundering measure. There is a possibility, but it's extremely slight possibility. And I think that uh, it doesn't make any sense because this was needed for Putin. This is like to show, hey, I'm not that, I'm not weak. 
I'm not that person who was stuttering, whose uh, eye was like uh, moving uncontrollably, whose hands were shaking. When he was making the video, when Prigozhin was advancing and Putin would say, everyone stand behind me, brothers and sisters, you know, not literally, but something like that. You know, all people support me, not Prigozhin, you know, those are traitors. And we all remember, he was weak and everyone's like, oh, look at this guy. The king has no clothes. And now he says, hey, this what happens to people who put me into the situation like that. So this was needed. This is the dish that was called served, uh, that was served cold. I'm sorry. So uh, this why hostile respite, I think that it was not staged. Mikhail Asp, thank you. Interesting to follow Twitter as you speak. Seems to be rumors of Wagner plan put in action. What's the Wagner plan put in action? To like destroy Wagner? It's in action already. Crusader Damien, the best questions, hands down. Like Rome, Russia will devour itself from within. And I more and more I see the situation, more and more I agree with that. Heroes today are traitors tomorrow, and eventually people will not follow. Collapse is imminent. Spot on, I agree with that. Thank you, Crusader Damien. Thank you for being the part of this community and supplying me and us with the best questions online. Tesseract, greetings from Austria, good nabend. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Your insights have clarified so many questions I had about Russian mentality and society. Thank you so much, my friend Dan Kishon. Um, tomorrow, please watch my stream about the oligarchs, about the rise and the fall of the oligarchs, because this, that will give you more understanding of Russia and how it works and why we're the position in Russia where we are at right now. So thank you so much for your generous support and please tune in tomorrow to watch about the oligarchs and Caesars. Nothing to add today from me. Well, you've just added 100 crowns. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it and you being here is priceless. Thank you. PMX Gaming. God dang it. I just learned how to pronounce his name after two years. Uh, you know, misfortune. You did say going back to hot dog selling would have been best case scenario. Yes, I did. Well, you know. We live, you learn. We learn. Oh, actually, in Prigozhin's case, we die, we learn. Craig Savarese. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Carlson Larrymore, do you think we will ever learn what kind of a deal Putin made with Prigozhin? Yes, we will, because everything that is in shadows today will come out into the light in the future. I believe that we will learn. Two minutes to midnight, thank you, from New Zealand, from uh, the very opposite side of the globe. Fantastic to see you. Do you think Prigozhin posting Wagner recruitment messages from Africa recently was the nail in the coffin? No. The nail in the coffin was when Putin came out with a public message and said, hey, unite behind me, and his hand was shaking, and you know his eye was like, you know, rolling up and down uncontrollably. Watch that message again. He projected to be very weak, very um, uncertain, very unsure. Okay, and it was humiliation to Putin. And once Putin uh, said, though, those who are, he didn't call Prigozhin by name, he said, those who are going against me are traitors, okay? And then Prigozhin came out and said, Putin just made a mistake. Well, we are moving on to Moscow to dethrone Putin, to throw him out. And that was the last nail in the coffin. That was his fate was decided right then. That's what I believe. Jason Thomas, thank you. 
with love to your family from our family in the UK. Thank you so much. Cheering you with this wonderful English tea. Thank you. <sighs> Thanks. The crook that became a cook croaked. Koshkin Dom, nice. Stephen Gardner, amazing how quick they were happy to release the names of the plane. Generally, it's the quiet treatment, not suspicious at all, lol. Stephen, thank you so much, you are spot on. That's one of the evidences that it was all planned for quite some time, staged and executed in the way it was planned. Marion was a stream yesterday. Wagner was in Africa. Well, Wagner is in Africa, still in Africa, and partially in Belarus. Well, that part that is in Belarus is being, <laughs> I don't know, destroyed, killed, or just moved, or disbanded. I don't know at this point, but they're taking care of it. The other part that is in Africa, I think that um, it's not, there's going to be no Wagner. Probably different people from KGB will come in and will say, we are the commanders now. You answer to us and they'll rename this unit and then they will, it's going to be a different thing. So, should have conquered Moscow. I think he's thinking the same thing right now. Miriam, howdy, howdy. Uh, Stefan. Greetings from Switzerland. Thank you, Stefan. Sending my love to Switzerland from Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Same thing happened to Alexander Lebedev in 2001. Not Lebedev, but Lebed. Lebed. Except for he was not in a jet, but in a helicopter. <laughs> uh, Dan Coldwell the best thing Russian Air Force has done in 18 months <laughs> also who will gain control on Prigozhin's closest of wigs closet of wigs let's pray they weren't all on board of the flight <laughs> master of these guys no more thank you Dan uh much appreciated and thank you for coming back and uh, supporting and sending the message. It's not a question, but, you know, it's hard to disagree with you. And Whitney, there needs to be a sticker saying, what the fudge? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brian Struvik, Constantine, Kaboom. Uh, it seems, yes, Brian, it seems just that way. All right, folks, I'm going to take a little, a little pause for 30 seconds, and I'm going to look what's going on as I've been speaking for such a long time, and this is a breaking news. It's, things are developing. So they are confirming from all directions, from all Telegram channels, from the Russian TV, from propaganda people, they're saying Evgeny Prigozhin is dead. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of experts now coming out saying, well, you know, we had a feeling that it's not going to end well for Prigozhin, yeah. Go and watch, I would say to those experts, go and watch my stream, June 27th. Just one question I don't understand is how, what happened to Prigozhin? How could he be so stupid? to actually go in Moscow and stop in the middle of this. You either do it all the way until the end, or you don't do it at all, you know? I mean, what 
<laughs> he knew. He must have known that he was signing like a mm, execution order to himself, you know. Micah, thank you so much for sponsoring 10 people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it very much. And Whitney, uh, I already saw the message. Thank you again. Atomic Electron Company, thank you. And was inevitable. Same thing happened to Gagarin when he publicly challenged Khrushchev. It's the Russian way. Glad you're safe and still out there, Konstantin. Well, I'll try to be out there for, for as long as I can. Thank you. Thank you, Atomic Electron. So basically not nothing much is like everyone all the pro russian telegram channels exploded propaganda has exploded oh prigozhin was a hero oh you know this is a terrorist act of ukraine oh you know look how those bloodthirsty those animals are and all that all 10 people died along with prigozhin the pilots whoever was at his plane no Shit, geniuses, you know. This, the fall of that plane is right there in the video. It was like falling down like a piece of brick. Boom. An interesting um, message just came out from Russia's Ministry of Defense. They said of, um, um, you know, shooting down two drones of a plane type in Bransk region, Bransk province. They didn't mean Prigozhin's plane, did they? No, probably not. Uh, all top people of Chivaka Wagner were in the plane, including Prigozhin's personal bodyguards. The USA President Joe Biden has been informed of uh, Prigozhin's plane crash. They start uh, giving out different uh, versions, the investigators. Craig Savaries, uh, those Russian planes from Belarus are giving the Wagner troop paratroopers training <laughs> without parachutes. <laughs> That's a funny one. Bang, bang, they hit the ground. <laughs> Sorry. Garth McHale, uh, the apparatus moved into an unpredictable orbit and ceased to exist as a result of collision with the surface of the Earth. Roscosmos said in a statement about Prigozhin. Yep. Bang, bang. He hit the ground. Cyber Tater. Do you think it will impact Russian military morale? Um, have you heard of a Russian helicopter that its pilot, a Russian pilot, uh, he defected to Ukraine, and he brought the helicopter along with him. I was thinking, how do Russian armed forces servicemen think, some of them at least? Imagine the pilots whose friends were shot down by Prigozhin. Imagine people, they the best friends, people they have served with, had served with for probably decades, you know, flew together. Uh, imagine one of them was just shut down by Prigozhin on the territory of Russia. And then 15 hours later, the commander-in-chief pardons everyone. Criminal investigation is closed. And, you know, all are said, well, it's not a big deal. Well, you know... <laughs> Wagner troops are going to move to Belarus now and just stay there. And those pilots are saying, wait a second, 
What about our comrades? What about the pilots who have been shot? You know, why were they shot down? Why were they killed? Why no one is paying for that? Um, I don't know. It's uh, to me, it's, it looks very, very strange. Um, I can't imagine how low the morale of those people. They feel betrayed. They feel like they probably don't have a goal. And I think quite a few of them are feeling this way. How will it impact the morale of Russian army? It just shows. I don't think that it'll it'll impact the soldiers, the privates, you know, the lower rank officers much. But I think the higher rank officers, it'll show them that, hey, every one of you is disposable. Disposable. Every one of you is just, you know, you're not a person, you're just a... Uh, just a number, just 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 a bug to this regime. You, they can dispose of you at any time they want, that they wish. That's how I think that, that's how they're going to take it. Cybertator, thank you so much for your question. And Rico New, thank you, fantastic entertainment. Kept, keep on going, best regards from Germany. No further questions. Thank you, my friend. Um, Bruce Schaff says God's protection on President Putin. Well, you know what? I think we will see very soon. Time will tell very, very soon what kind of protection Mr. Putin has from God. Well, at least we're seeing what kind of protection Prigozhin had from God. Mia Drag, no, it's an error he played for that because of Hag Court. Um, well, thank you. That's interesting. Um, Son Ray, is there any chance Wagner still has enough operative capabilities to launch another attack? Wagner has been stripped of the leadership. Wagner is no more. Okay. There are no top commanders. Wagner had two people in charge. Prigozhin and his right-hand man, the commander Utkin. A real piece of shit. And they both are dead. So, <laughs> Wagner is being disbanded. The question is, what's going to happen to the fighters? Will they be executed? Will be put in prison? Or just disbanded? Or That is the question. The question whether Wagner will stay or not is no. It's clear. It's going to cease to exist. It's already, the decision was made two months ago. It just takes a, a few weeks to execute that decision. Sonry, is there any chance Wagner? Oh, yeah, I just read that. Don Crossland from Texas. Howdy, howdy. Everything's bigger and better in Texas, huh? Coffee cake, hello. Hooked by Donian. Thank you so much for coming. Good to see you, Tullius Counter. Thank you. To me, Putin promised Prigozhin pardon, but with the intention of getting rid of him anyways. Well, they've gotten rid of Prigozhin, all right. Two months exactly to the date. That's symbolic. That's like a message. See what happens? That's not a coincidence. See what happens, you know, this is the day. Crusader Damien, Kremlin's Lavrov claims jet aggressively attacked Russian missile. Missile behaved perfectly well until it had to defend itself. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Mr. Mojo Raising, thank you so much. Harry Teckenberg, uh, what will they do with uh, Africa missions? Different commanders will take over from the KGB, of course, and most likely there will be different people. The, you know, 
the how do you call it soldiers on the ground the grunts that that those who do the all the work they will probably stay but the officers are going to be taken care of in one way or another and replaced with most likely kgb people um christian burasa or he wasn't on that plane and he was on somewhere else let's not be sure he's dead you know you're right the chances are that he is dead they're very high but there's a small tiny chance of course that he could be hiding someplace or he wasn't on the plane or whatever but yeah i agree but that chance is minuscule but it exists i agree who else was on the plane? I already answered that question. Bodyguards, um, the person in charge of log logistics of Chevaka Wagner, in charge of finance, in charge of... And Prigozhin Utkin, stewardesses in the, um, the pilots. Pretty sure Prigozhin has lots of money stashed for the family. But I don't know. I don't care. To be honest. Eugene Lindsay, live video on CNN of plane crash from Vero Beach, Florida. Howdy, howdy. Thank you. So who takes over from Prigozhin now? It depends on what. His money, his family probably will take over some. and The rest will be disposed. And then um, there's not much to take over. Chevaka Wagner. Well, I've been talking about that. Wabbly, wabbly. Do you think Prigozhin had plans in place for revenge in the event of his death? This is what I started the stream, talking about the aftermath. I'm pretty sure he had lots of evidence. He was, he, he was informed of the inner deep secrets of Putin and his people. And I'm pretty sure that he was not stupid and he took some kind of a insurance policy in terms of, you know, uh, people know that if he's dead, then certain information will start getting released. I'm pretty sure it'll happen. I said I'm taking my popcorn waiting. Rascal 808, howdy. Thank you so much for good words. From Scotland, send in love from Tashkent to Scotland. Bang, bang, his baby shot him down. Yep, it's a crazy world we live in. Um, how big is Wagner Group now? Well, about, you know, 16 people for the next few hours, and then uh, the count will go down after that. Micah, mods are doing an amazing job today. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you, mods. What? forces are operating in Africa and who's in charge of them right now can't tell you one KG1 um, I can't tell you that KG1 uh, because like I said most likely the forces will be taken over by KGB or by allocated people allocated by Putin or his friends we'll see but you know I'll be keeping you informed on that Leopard Snow, 75. India landed a rover on the moon. Putin put down a private jet in Moscow. Gotta have national pride somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> Hard to disagree with you. Thank you so much. We're making Konstantin sing. <laughs> Thank you. Flutter girl, thank you so much. Yes, you are. Henrik, I'm impressed with you, Constantine. You have nerves of steel and drive the stream through very calm and professional. Well, Henrik, thank you so much. I'm doing my best. You know, I have help of a few people who are real heroes too. They're Lorna, Mommy, Bob S. I saw Amir here, and Harry is not with us today, is he? somewhere on a ferry is missing a lot of fun yes so uh, the mods are doing an incredible job and would you please give them a, a, a round of applause 
And I see that uh, Jason Carney is big with a huge bang. Thank you, Jason, for your support. Again, the champion of um, live streaming, thank you so much. Today we're having a very unusual live stream, you know. Oh. Thank you, Jason. And thanks for the uh, gifting memberships to five people. Thank you from me and my wife, Natasha. Please come to our chat, uh, private chat on Saturday. We would like to thank you so much. Uh, Fox, I'm looking, I'm looking like one eye. I'm looking at the camera, the stream, and on the screen for the comments. And my right eye, I'm looking for the incoming news. What's, what's going on? And it seems like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, um, emotions in the Russian propaganda. For example, in Rostov region, according to 161.ru, that's a web portal, they have announced uh, a calling, like all police officers in Rosguardia, you know, the, the Praetorians are getting together at alarm, and I don't really know why, but they're just... <laughs> Probably they're expecting some kind of a riots or something, which I don't understand. I don't I don't understand why. Interesting. Jacob N from Australia, thank you for coming back and thanks for supporting. As usual, no message from you, but the message is heard and it's big. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Atomic Electron, welcome to Undercover in Russia. That's a higher tier. I appreciate it. Thank you for becoming super sponsor. <laughs> Wolfhound26, great stream today, breaking news to cover. Yeah. Thank you so much for your support, and this is a it's definitely breaking news stream. Shouldn't have flown Ryanair, Ryanair. Yes, I think he should have. Would have been safer. GWD Products, it's just confirmed he was on the board of the aircraft. It was confirmed before I started the stream, actually. It was confirmed on BBC, it was confirmed on the Russian state TV, propaganda, all channels, official TV, you know. So it is confirmed, yes. Teresa D, thank you again. Marion, thank you. Twenty-three six, twenty-three eight. Putin is fascinated by numbers and dates. Well, special flight, yeah. Michael Silberg. Michael Mayo in Mali, one of one Alexander Maslov. Sonar Sergei Ivanov. I'm not sure what you mean. Okay. My friends, um, thank you for coming. I think I'm going to wrap it up. And there is no prayer today. This is a very unusual stream. Um, I would like to ask you to come back tomorrow to hear the message about Russia. I'm working. I have worked on the message. I'm actually finished. I'm ready to deliver it. And I would have, if not for this uh, event of today. But I want you to learn more about Russia. I want you to understand more about Russia. And there are so many white spots in the Russian culture and history, in recent history, that are, they still exist for many foreigners. And I'm going to be eliminating one of those white spots tomorrow. I will tell you of the rise and the fall of the oligarchs. So again, please 
come back and check it out. You will understand how Russia works and why things are happening that are happening right now a little more after watching my tomorrow stream. So thank you so very much. Um, you're absolutely awesome. Thank you. Um, thanks for all your support. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. I will see you all tomorrow. Um, before I leave, I would like you to help me out a little bit, to along with me, to say, to repeat after me, to say out loud, as loud as you can, the usual. And again, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Please repeat after me. Carthago de Lenda Est. <laughs>